Today we're talking about five faux pas, five mistakes, five errors, whatever you want to call it, five things you do wrong that are preventing you from growing and scaling your estate planning practice. So we're just going to jump right into this, guys. Mistake number one is commodity marketing. If you're out there selling wills, trusts, powers of attorney, healthcare documents, that's what you're talking about in your marketing. That's what you're talking about in your conversations with prospects, with referral partners. If you're talking about the documents that you create, then you're not talking about the relationship. And what that does is it creates this ethereal thing, this commodity where people can price compare you, they can price shop you. They no longer need you, what they now need is a document. And when this happens, guys, it's no bueno. So what's the result of commodity marketing? It's a constant struggle with cash flow. It's a long and drawn out sales cycle. It's clients or prospects that miss meetings. It's clients and prospects that delay payment and don't make a decision quickly. It's a practice that's very difficult to grow. Nay, I would say impossible. Okay, so the second mistake, the second faux pas is low ticket pricing. Did you know that most lawyers, in fact, a vast majority of lawyers, charge less than $2,000 for a comprehensive estate plan? Even if you succeed, you fail. A low ticket offer puts a ceiling on the revenue that you can make. The only way to, to try to grow is to increase manpower, the, the hours, the employees, the overhead. And when you do that, overhead seems to grow at the same rate as revenue. It's very difficult, nay, I would say, again, impossible to scale up. Faux pas number three, ignoring the internet, especially social media. It's widely known that 80% of adult Americans spend at least an hour a week on Facebook. But did you know that only 20% of lawyers even have a Facebook account? Most lawyers see the internet as a way to get onto Google, try to find their way onto page one, as if that pays them somehow. What that really does, if you break it down, is it relies on a very small percentage of the population to go online and search and say, I need a lawyer. I need a help with my estate planning attorney. I need to hire somebody right now. And so they go online to look. And yes, you want to be there. But recognize that that's a fraction of the percentage of people that are actually out there using the internet. What's important to do is recognize you can do both. You can be there when people are looking for a lawyer, but you can also go to the other 99.9% .9 of people who are struggling in estate planning, who have worries and concerns about their, their family, about their inheritance, about leaving an inheritance, about paying for long-term care, about caring for an aging parent. They're struggling with all of these issues and they have no idea that you can help them. Social media is the place where you can go directly to the consumer and serve them directly. The result of ignoring the internet and especially social media, maybe relying solely on referral partners or on traditional methods of marketing, is that you're always going to struggle with lead flow. And when you always struggle with lead flow, you're always going to struggle with cash flow. The fourth faux pas, the fourth big mistake that lawyers make that prevent them from scaling their estate planning practice is that all of their business comes from professional referral sources. 20 years ago, the traditional advice to grow an estate planning law firm was to take every advisor to lunch, build a relationship with them. They're the ones that see all the clients that have money and they're the, they will be the ones that refer you business. 20 years ago, that may have been true, but times have changed. We're in a different era, a different generation. Did you know that 60% of people that have over $100,000 invested in the stock market are self-advised? They're trading and investing all on their own online. Those same people are not, however, hiring an estate planning attorney online or doing their own estate planning work. They typically go without that being done. Somebody has to fill the gap. Hopefully that somebody is you. What's the result of making mistake number four? Of having all of your business come from professional advisors? is that you are now fully dependent on somebody else for your financial security and your wealth that you can make in your lifetime. It'd be ridiculous for a couple who has built significant wealth over their life and raised their children to go to Rocket Lawyer and create a plan without any advice from a seasoned professional. But lawyers do this to themselves all the time. They go the DIY route when it comes to their marketing. Listen, if you knew how to grow and scale your practice on your own, you would have done it by now. 
expert guidance and expert help is oftentimes the only solution to actually achieving your goals. So what's the result of making the fifth faux pas? It's a constant struggle with decision making, a constant struggle with execution, with mindset, with your skill set, with burnout. In essence, it results in a lot of wasted time and effort that can be extraordinarily expensive. You guys, these are what I see as the five biggest mistakes, the five biggest faux pas that estate planning and elder law attorneys make when they are trying to scale and grow their practice. Take these to heart. I would encourage you to go one step further. If you're committed to this outcome of scaling your practice, go ahead and book a call. There'll be a short application for you to fill out so that I can be prepared for our meeting. And I'm going to help you get clarity on what it is you truly are capable of, what your goals are, be what you've been through up to this point. And if we can help, I'll outline the exact strategy to help you get there. I look forward to talking with you. I look forward to seeing you. Have a great day and God bless.